given us this building, these grounds. We thank you for those who give to this church, who are trusting you, Lord. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for those, oh Lord, that you've called to this church to be a part of it, this work that you're doing here. We pray that if there's anyone who needs to be baptized, anyone who needs Christ, that your spirit would move in this service. And Lord, we pray that they would have a heart to do your will. Father, we pray too in Jesus' name, oh God, for this revival that is beginning in our hearts, a heart of fire, a passion for Jesus. We pray, Lord God, for each one of us to just be in relationship with him, a fiery, loving relationship with Christ. We thank you, Lord God, that this revival beginning right here with us <laughs> will touch the nations of the world. Yes. We believe it, and we see it, and we pronounce it in Jesus' name. Father, we pray for our family, friends, co-workers, neighbors, husbands and wives and children and grandchildren who may not know you. Oh, Lord, we pray. Pray for people in your heart that you believe need God this morning. You're not judging them. You're not judging anybody. You just say, God, touch them. Father, we pray for Mr. Baker and Mr. McGuffey and Mary. We pray for Ms. Williams. We pray, Father, <coughs> for Mr. Mr. Uh, Brother Perry and his family, Father. We pray, Father, in Jesus' name, for Brother Daniel. We pray for Mr. Smith. We pray, Father. Well, just lift up people. I'm just praying for people. Hallelujah. We pray for Mr. Victor. We pray for Dear. We pray, Father, for Ms. Tina and Janelle. We pray for Ms. Bobby. We pray for Zeke. We pray for Ken, Brother Wayne. We pray for all in our church, Lord. I pray, Lord God, for Ms. Sellers and Ms. Dennis. Touch them all, Father. Father, even those that didn't pray for this morning, they know they're in my heart. Touch each one, Chanda, Father. Touch everyone, Amelia. Lord, just touch our church. Y'all don't mind, I keep seeing people to pray for. So just lift up the name of the Lord right now. Apparently, we need some prayer here. Let's say, God, we just lift you up, Lord. We know that you hear our prayers. We know you are a faithful God. There is none like you. Oh, God, we rebuke every demon spirit that would oppress us. We're no longer in the dust of the rocks, Lord. We're coming out. We're coming out to do your work, to live according to your people and according to your will. We rebuke everything that comes against you right now in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. There is none like him, and we lift him up over this service. In Jesus' name, let no man be exalted. Jesus Christ is Lord. Sometimes you got to get those stale devil out of here. It's a place of life and joy Hallelujah. and peace. Hallelujah. 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 Whatever you had at home and whatever you left last week, leave it there. Hallelujah. It's time to serve the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Ain't nobody worth you being distracted from God. That's right. Nobody. That's right. Said nobody's worth that. No thing, no school, no work, no job. It's worth you being distracted from Almighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Trust me. That's a fact, yes. especially in these last days. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, uh, I hated to leave uh, Texas today and come back home, but it's always better to be home. My wife was glad to see me. That was just so awesome. She was glad to see me. Thank you. That's nice. I need to go some more. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rihanna looked at Mr. Big and said, you need to go too. So I was glad to see you. Amen. Oh, no, I'm gonna get kind of, you got to have a little life in this church. I'm going to have a little fun. Yes, We're all family here. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if we can't talk and laugh, then who can? Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I want you to turn with me to Genesis chapter 24. And I really want you to understand that God wants you not just to come to church. He wants to have a relationship with you. Yes. Do you know he wants a relationship with you? See, religion keeps us from wanting a relationship with God. God doesn't want you just to come to church. He wants you to know him better. He wants you to long for him, thirst for him, hunger for him. Yes, he wants you to press in for him. Yes. You know, we got all these cares in the world, but nothing is better than Jesus. We need to press in and say, Lord, when I put my mind on other things, I get in trouble. 
But when my mind is on you, I'm in peace. Yes. I'm happy. I have joy. Yes. Help me to get rid of the distractions of the world and learn that I have a relationship with the most mighty thing that is ever going to be, Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. See, some of you don't realize the Savior we have. You see, and you know, I don't blame you because it takes a while to get to know him better. If there's anything this church wants to do is to get you to know him. Not the pastor, not the religion, not the building, not the grounds, but Jesus. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, you, know, you know, you don't even need to know my name. Half of y'all don't know my name. How many of y'all know my name? <laughs> oh, that's better than it used to be. You don't need to know my name. Do you know Jesus' name? How many of y'all know his name? Come on, sir. That's everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, you don't need to know mine. Just know him. Hallelujah. You can call me that man. That some people call me. That, that man is right there. I've been called Red Bean Pastor. I've been called all kinds of names. Because I'm not one of the preachers that put their name on the sign. But my wife put it on that bulletin bag, that her Janelle. So that's about as close as you're going to get for me to put my name in. Just so you can know you have a pastor with a name. Hallelujah. Listen. When you love God, you want to serve God. Yes. I can tell you how I know when people love God. Because love is always an action. I preach that all the time. If I say I love my wife, I don't act it. I don't do what I'm supposed to do and take care of my house, my children, but I say I love them. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not the kind of love that God talks about. Some man tells you that he loves you and he does nothing for you. You need to question that kind of love. Some woman tell you, I love you, baby, and don't do nothing for you. Mm -hmm. You need to question that love. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And amen. amen. But in God's way, you can't say you love him and you don't want to serve him. Amen. You see, when you love him, you want to serve the living God. There's an example of servantship beyond anything I have ever read in the Bible, really. And, and a lot of men of God had men who were like servants that would have a servant's heart. And there's a man, and some people think in Genesis 24 is EDA's all we're talking about. Uh, so that's Abraham's servant. But now this EDA's all, we're going to read about it in a few minutes. He was going to inherit everything Abraham had because Abraham had no son. You would think, whoa. God has made Abraham rich. But why did God make Abraham rich? You have to turn on these scriptures because in Genesis chapter 18, verse 3, he made Abraham rich because Abraham was a servant first. Mm -hmm. People want to get rich, but they don't want to serve God. Come on, Jesus. Hallelujah. They want to have the blessings, but they don't want to serve him. Come on, Jesus. Before Abraham had more than enough, he had way more than enough. He served the living God. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Abraham had a servant who watched how he served the living God. His name was Eliezer of Damascus. But we're not going to talk about his name because it's not mentioned in Genesis 24, but most people think that's who we're talking about. Eliezer's name actually means God is my help. Hallelujah. See, when you serve God, it's God who helps you serve yes. him. Yes. It's the strangest thing. My wife and I were talking about this this morning, how, you know, what is our life like? Our life is 100% service. I, I, don't, I don't even know what I do for myself anymore. I brush my teeth, I take care of myself. As far as that's hygiene, when it comes to activity, all of what we do is for everybody else. Hallelujah. Some of you can relate to that. You don't live for yourself, you serve. Hallelujah, you say, I serve. Sir. Even if you get paid on your job, you're serving. Yeah. You get a check, but you're serving. Yeah. And most of you don't have a check worth what you're serving for. Yeah. <laughs> but I want you to see that a servant's heart is part of the condition of being a Christian. It's not something you choose to do, it's something you have to be. I want to be a servant of the living God. Yes. I don't want to live for myself. Yes. I have more fun and more excitement seeing other people blessed. I see more excitement when my children are blessed. My wife feels blessed. My mother-in-law, my mama. I want to bless other people with my life. I want my life to have meaning. Come on, sir. 
It don't mean nothing to live for yourself. That's, That's an right. easy thing to do. That's right. That's right. The world lives for itself. That's right. yeah. So if you're going to be a Christian, you ought to live for others. Come on, Jesus. Eliezer was a great servant of the living God. Abraham was toward the end of his years. This man has served him. We don't know how long. We know at least since Genesis 15, because all that wealth he had was going to go to this man. Mm -hmm. But this man, even when Isaac was born, was still serving Abraham. Because mm -hmm. he didn't serve Abraham because Abraham get, was going to give him everything if he died. He served Abraham because he loved Abraham. Yes. Hallelujah. And Abraham loved him. Yes. Hallelujah. And as Abraham is getting ready to go home and getting in his old age, he wants to find a wife for his son. Well, this son is Isaac, and this son is where the promise is going to come. Mm -hmm. Yes. God gave him all those goods and all that wealth, but he gave it to him because from Abraham will come a promise. Mm -hmm. God gives you a lot. When he gives you a lot, it's for you to have a promise. Yes. Come God on. wants you to know that when he gives you much, he expects much. Yes. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so when he gives that all to you, you know what? We all messed up when we get gimme, gimme, gimme religion. We have all the things we need, and we forget to serve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, come on. So you know what you forget? You forget the promise. That's right. Yeah. Because unless you serve, you don't get the promise. Yeah. Sooner or later, you're gonna fizzle out. Yeah. Servants' hearts keep fire burning. Mm -hmm. Say, yes. keeps fire burning. Keeps fire burning. As long as I'm serving, I'm gonna keep my fire burning. Yes. My yes. passion for Jesus. Yes. Oh, See, yes. if I'm not serving, I'm, that fire gonna go out. You're not serving, it's gonna go out. Trust me. It's like a little puff of smoke. Mm. And you don't have no passion for Jesus, no passion for church. You're going to get laid back, sitting at home, watching football mm. games, other soap operas, whatever's on. But today, I want to tell you how to keep you fire. Mm -hmm. Be servants of fire. Hallelujah. Be a servant of the living God. Here's Eleazar in chapter 24. And I'm not going to read everything. It's a very long chapter of Genesis. And I, did I tell you Genesis 24? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Because somebody told me last week, Rare, well, why you get mixed up on where to tell us to go? Okay. Well, you know who that was. It, it was two people because she infected my best buddy in here. The gym. Uh -huh. I'm not going to say the name. She sit right next to him. <laughs> but we love that lady. And we love the gym. If anybody could tell me that, it's them too. Right? <laughs> <laughs> if Lucinda tell me, I said, what do you mean? <laughs> they tell me that. I told them, I said, look, I'll do better next time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got to be answerable to somebody. Come on, Jesus. Huh? Hallelujah. Hey, look, in Genesis 24, verse 1, Abraham was now old and well advanced in years. And the Lord had blessed him in every way. Say every way. In every way. Now, can you think of being blessed in every way? Come on. But he was first a servant before God just kept blessing him, kept blessing him, kept blessing him, kept blessing him. Yes. Some of y'all want the blessing, but you don't want the servant. Come on, Jesus. He said to the chief servant in his household, the chief servant, we know who that was, mm -hmm. the one in charge of all that he had. Restate that with He was in charge of everything. He was in charge of everything. When Abraham died, do you know that man would get everything? If he would have died before Isaac was born? But instead, this man was so faithful to Abraham, it wasn't the stuff that blessed him. It was his relationship with Abraham yes. that blessed him. Yes, sir. It was the fact that he loved Abraham so much he served him. Hallelujah. He that Eliezer was a slave. But you know, servants are not yes. slaves. Come on, Jesus. The servants can go. He could have left Abraham and went on about his business. Yep. Mm -hmm. Went back to Damascus. He's a servant. Yes. That's a benefit to serving is you fulfill your relationship of love. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's why we serve our wives. That's why we serve our children. Because that's a benefit to having a relationship of love. We serve. We can't help ourselves. Can we? Hallelujah. Even when they're no good and low down, mm -hmm. we serve. Hallelujah. Isn't that right? Why y'all look at me like that? <laughs> Come on, Jesus. Yes, Lord. You still serving when they low down? Isn't that right? Yes. Yep. 
Okay. Well, I guess y'all stop serving when they get low down. <laughs> so I, can see that. I see none over there saying that's right. Yeah, I stop serving. Well, Miss Tina said, no, I keep serving. Hallelujah. Listen, Eliezer didn't care about the goods. He was interested in the promise, mm -hmm. which was in Isaac. And so Abraham asked him to swear with an oath, put your hand under my thigh and promise. So, see, Eliezer knew for sure what that meant. You put my hand where my seed came from. It's my seed that I want you to serve from now on. Mm -hmm. But I have a mission for you, he told him. I want you to go and find a wife for my son. You know, when Jesus left heaven, he came to get a church for his father. He left that heavenly place and became a servant. Yes. yes the scripture says in Philippians 2, verse 7, mm -hmm. he was a servant. He made himself a servant to bring back a church without spot or wrinkle. Come on, Jesus. See, a servant has a purpose to bring a promise. He's not serving for nothing. He's bringing a promise. When you serve it, you're bringing forth a promise. Something God, God wants from you to bring to him. Whether it's your children, your home, whether it's your church, you serve to make the promise right. Yes. Jesus came and became the lowest of servants. You know, we've been told as black people we came from a curse of pain. You know, I study that a lot. The scripture says, in King James especially, it says Ham was cursed by Abraham, by Noah, to be a servant of servants. You know the greatest servant in the Bible? Jesus. It's Jesus. Yeah. You know who Ham's grandson was that was cursed? Canaan. You know where Jesus died and lived? Came. Mm -hmm. You may want to change your perspective of that. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may want to change how you see yourself a little bit. God don't look at color. He looks at purpose. Yes. Thank Hallelujah. you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at color. Yes. We read and we study and everything we think of is color. But God looks at promises. Purpose, yes. Fulfillment. Thank you, duty, Jesus. Service. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. God. So in Canaan, the greatest servant of all time, he was truly a servant of servant because he died for everybody. Yes. On that cross in Jerusalem, which is in Canaan. Mm. Which is the land that Abraham kind of prescribed out for his people. Yes. The Jews had to go into slavery before they can be worthy of being true servants. Hallelujah. Sometimes you got to get real low before you can, can really understand service. Yes. Yes. Sometimes you got to be humble before you can really understand how important it is to serve somebody else. Yes. Y'all wake up. Hallelujah. Come on, Jesus. Praise God. I'm trying to tell you something that's very important. If you just say, I love Jesus, and you ain't serving him, you're not really loving him. That's right. Come on, Jesus. Yes, Lord. You're not loving him. That's that religious love. That being La La Land. That's right. You know, the kind of, of love that when you get back in your Mercedes, when you leave church, you pass by people and you say, well, they need to get a job. <laughs> if they were paying their tithes, they'd have more. Come on, Jesus. You see, that's a religious spirit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you see somebody in need, a religious spirit would say, you, 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 sh you, should, you deserve what you get. But a servant's heart said, I wish I had something yeah. to give this yeah. person. Hallelujah. For me. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want you to have a servant's heart in this church. Yes. It's not about what you have. God gave us plenty so we can give plenty. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he ain't gave it to you for you to get it back. Your servant's heart. Don't want nothing back. Come on, I want to give you a few things about Eliezer. I'm going to read some more in this scripture. But I want you to just remember O-P-A-S, Opus. Opus. He was obedient. Believe it or not, he prayed to Abraham's God. We'll see that in a few minutes. He took action in love. And he sacrificed his own life to live for Abraham. The 
obedience, prayer, action, and sacrifice. You give up something if you want to be a servant. Don't you? You know, I'm going to give you an example. That man that gets that food cooked and you fix it and put it on the table for you, for him when he gets home, I'm looking at the ladies. And you worked all day just like you worked all day, but you're going to fix this food and serve him. Mm -hmm. and, and, and see, you, you, you're doing it because that's what he asked you to do. And, and you're doing it as a, with a servant's heart. And he might not even appreciate it. But you did it. He may even reject you. But you did it. God's people rejected him, but he did it. Hallelujah. That's a servant's heart. Hallelujah. You don't look for no reward or appreciation. You just serve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, people, wake Hallelujah. Up. I'm talking to servants because I know you. I want you to see it's okay to be a servant. Yes, sir. Because there's a promise waiting for you. Yes, sir. You'll be served. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, but if you got to get a check for everything you do, that ain't serving. But if you serve in what you do, you don't get paid enough for it, you serve it. Hallelujah. 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 Now everybody can say hallelujah to that. Hallelujah. Just hallelujah. the Bible. Listen. Listen. <coughs> Abraham told him in verse 6, he says, make sure that you do not take my son back there to Canaan. Don't get no Canaan. Don't, don't go get no Canaanite woman. Now why? I don't know because I don't know what the difference is with who he was getting. Uh, but let me shut up. The Lord, the God of heaven, who brought me out of my father's household in my native land, and who spoke to me and promised me on oath, saying, to your offspring I will give this land. He will send his angel before you so that you can get a wife for my son from there. Isn't that something? Listen. If the woman is unwilling to come back with you, then you will be released from this oath of mine. Only do not take my son, my son back there. So the servant put his hand under the thigh of his master, Abraham, and swore an oath to him concerning this man. In other words, I don't want you to take my son with you to go get her. I want you to get her. Yes, yes. And I want the God that I serve to guide you. Yes, sir. You serve with me. I serve him, you go, and you fulfill this promise by going and get him a wife. Because if the seed doesn't reproduce, then the promise won't ever come. My Lord. Right? right? So I got to get a wife for it. Now, I think Isaac was so close to his mother, he could care less for a wife at the time. But his mama's dead now. So it's time to get him a wife. I ain't going to think about how old he was, but it's time to get him a wife. Mama's gone. Time for you to get your wife so you can reproduce. Hallelujah. 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 Because there's a promise inside of you yes, that God come for. Yes. And I'm sending my servant, my faithful servant. Mm -hmm. I'm entrusting him to, to go without you to choose this person who's going to be the promise fulfilled in my son Isaac. I'm trusting you with the one thing left I got to do before I go. Yes, sir. Well, this is a trusted servant. Yes. yes. I, I got to have him a wife before I leave him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because the seed has to come through Isaac. Yes. And the promise ain't coming without her. That's right. She got to be the right one mm -hmm. that the Lord leads you to. Thank you, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Hallelujah. yes. Come on, people. Come on, yes. Y'all are just really too dead for me today. Come on. I studied all on this plane last night. For this <laughs> Come on. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Eliezer was given a whole lot by Abraham to go on this journey. Verse 11. He had the camels when he, I'm sorry. Then the servant took 10 of his master's camel, verse 10, and left, taking with him all kinds of good things, from his master. Listen, I mean, Abraham trusted this man. Abraham was pretty much bedridden. He just landed, there, really. Well, the next chapter, he gets him a wife, so I don't know what order that is in. But uh, we do know that he trusted this servant yes. with his goods. Yes. yes. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your servant to go out to fulfill the promise. Yes, yes. come on, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I gave you all my goods mm -hmm. to go out and get a wife for my son. Mm -hmm. Thank so you, Jesus. So the promise can come forth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory Praise God. God. Now, I don't want no idiot wife. I don't want him even going with you. I want him to choose the most beautiful person. I want him to choose the one God asked for. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. I, I want you to just, this man was so trusted and so much a servant. Abraham trusted him to be obedient to the, to the angel that was going to escort him. To be obedient to the voice of God. We don't even know if Eliezer served God. We know that he served the God of Abraham. That's how he would say it. But as for a personal relationship, we don't know that. All we know is that he was faithful. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 And then uh, he says, <clears throat> when he got there, Abraham told him, I mean, the Lord showed him that uh, the person who's going to get water, come out to the well to get water, that's the person that is going to be his wife. Mm -hmm. Verse 12. When he prayed, O oh Lord God, of my master Abraham, see he was a praying, not only obeyed, but he prayed, mm -hmm. and show kindness to my master Abraham. See, I am standing beside the spring, and the daughters of the townspeople are coming out to draw water. May it be that when I say to a girl, please let down your jar that I may have a drink, and she say, drink, and I'll water your camels too. Let her be the one you have chosen for your servant Isaac. By this, I will know that you have known, shown kindness to my master. He's not interested in his own welfare, is he? Mm -hmm. He said, look, this God of Abraham, you show me this woman. You, you identify her by these actions. Yes, sir. And when she doesn't, you know, show me kindness, show kindness to my master, not to me, to my master. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Show Hallelujah. Kindness that he may have a wife for his son. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, you know the story. Before he, the next verse, verse 15, bad with me, y'all. Mm -hmm. Before he had finished praying, Rebecca came out with her jar <coughs> on her shoulder. She was the daughter of Bethuel, son of Milcah, who was the wife of Abraham's brother Nahor. The girl was very beautiful, a virgin. No man had ever laid with her. She went down to the spring, filled her jar, and came up again. The servant hurried to meet her and said, Please give me a little water from your jar. She, drink, my lord, she said, and quickly lowered the jar to her hands and gave him a drink. That's something else he wanted her to do with him. Mm -hmm. Verse 19, after she had given him a drink, she said, I'll draw water for your camels too, until they have finished drinking. So she quickly emptied her jar into the trough ran back to the water to draw more water and drew enough for all his camels. Without saying a word, the man watched her closely to learn whether or not the Lord had made his journey successful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. You don't know how active God is in your life. Mm -hmm. You think it's coincidence That's right. when God does something you actually pray for. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's not coincidence. That's right. He's confirming yes. that you're on the right track. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's just confirming yes. you're going the right way. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Say it's not coincidence. It's not coincidence. When I pray for something and God answers my prayer, yes. somebody yes. else take it for granted. It must be a coincidence. You pray for a husband and you got one. Yes. Now you're sorry you got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stop it, y'all. Why are y'all ladies looking back at me laughing? <laughs> Come on, Jesus. Listen, verse 21. Without saying a word, the man watched her closely. All he's interested in is his master. He's watching the situation closely. Is this the one? This, I prayed for this. I got this. It's the answer to what I prayed for. But I still want to be sure it's the right one. Yes. yes. He's still watching to see. In verse 24, it says, <clears throat> She identified herself. She said, I am the daughter of Bethuel, the son that milked the war to Nahor. And she added, we have plenty of straw and fire, as well as room for you to spend the night. 
And then she said, then the man bowed down and worshiped the Lord, saying, so she knows now, huh? mm -hmm. praise be to the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who has not abandoned his kindness and faithfulness to my master. As for me, the Lord has led me on the journey to the house of my master's relatives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be to God for my master, yeah. for showing kindness to my master. Yes. As for me, Hallelujah. I just went on this journey yes. to serve him. Yes. I don't get nothing out of this. But what I do get, I had the opportunity to go on this journey and serve my master. Yes. Hallelujah. But you have shown kindness to my master. That's all, that's all I live for. Is that I fulfilled the call that my master had upon me. Yes. The oath that I took yeah. when I committed to him. Yes, Lord. I fulfilled it. Yes. yes. That's all the reward that I need. Yes. Hallelujah. That's all the reward I need. But I'm so happy that you gave my master what he wanted. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's a service hall. Yes. Nothing for me. I was just glad I was fulfilling what he told me to do. Hallelujah. Yes. I let it loose. Thank I you. I did what I was supposed to do. Thank you, Father. I came on this journey not knowing how this was going to work out. Yes. But I prayed. Mm -hmm. I took action. Mm -hmm. And then the right person came. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And my master, what he sent me for, I got it. Thank Hallelujah. you. Hallelujah. How do I fulfill a service desire? <laughs> I gave my master what he asked for. Mm -hmm. yes. How do a servant get fulfilled? He can get no money. He had all these camels and all his wealth with it. All his gold. Yeah. You know, this is Laban in his household. Laban looking at that gold. He'd be glad for Rebecca to go. Because he wanted that gold. Right. Hallelujah. Right. you read that later. But this, this man is not interested in the gold. He's not interested in silver. He just wants to go on his journey for his master. Yes. Right. And come back to his master have done, and have done what my master told me. <coughs> yes, <coughs> yes. Is that not a servant? Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Go with me to Matthew 25. We have a lot to preach on. We'll do it this week. Who? Ah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Matthew 25. Please be with me. You know why you're turning there? I want you to know Paul said in Romans 1 and Galatians that he was a servant of Christ. James in James 1.1 1, 1, say he was a servant. Peter in 2 Peter 1 said he was a servant. Jude in Jude 1 said he was a servant. Yes. John in Revelation 1 said he was a servant. Yes. And the scripture says in, in, in Revelation 15, Moses was a servant. Yes. I think you're in good company if you're a servant. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Some of y'all won't be in company with Bill Gates and all that. But you know, I think that's the best company in the world right there. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Praise Glory God. To God. That's the company I want to be in. Yes. Those who don't just have the goods. Got the promise. Come on. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what a servant gets. He don't just get the rewards of this life. He gets the promise. Thank you, Jesus. Because he's just on this journey mm -hmm. with all that he has to fulfill his master's will. Yes. That's the only reason why he's on this journey. I got all this stuff that don't really belong to me. But I just want to fulfill my master's will. Yes. Hallelujah. How many of y'all have been serving like that? Hallelujah. Hey, look, he sacrificed his own life to live for Abraham's life. Mm -hmm. But he brought the promise back to Abraham. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And to us, too, for that matter. That's an important man in the Bible is Eliezer. Mm -hmm. or Eliezer. He's very important. Hallelujah. Because without him, Isaac wouldn't have had a wife. Hmm. Jacob wouldn't have been here. Mm. Wow. Joseph wouldn't have been here. Judah wouldn't have been here. Mm. The seed of Christ is Judah. Yes. Come on, Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. You see how important this journey is? Yes. Yes. It was the servant. Yes. Give all the credit to Abraham. What about the servant? Hallelujah. 
Praise God. He didn't look for praise for himself. Right. He lived for his master. Come on, yeah. Jesus. How many of y'all can do that? You want somebody to notice you, don't you? Mm. How many of y'all can serve without people noticing? We got a beautiful church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to take you up on that. I saw some hands that I didn't expect. <laughs> I will remember that. <laughs> I shouldn't have raised it. <laughs> okay, where I told you to go? Matthew 25. Okay, bear with me, y'all. Are you with me? Yes. Just, just, just see if I can do something to get you with a servant's heart to understand this. Matthew 25. The parable of the talents. <clears throat> Verse 14. Again, it will be like a man talking about the kingdom of heaven. It will be like a man going on a journey. Does that sound like Eliezer? Eliezer. Yeah. That's yep. what the kingdom of heaven is like. A man yep. or a woman going on a journey. journey. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Who called his servants and entrusted his property to them. Yes. He called them and said, look, I'll give you all that I have. Isn't that what Abraham did? Yeah. He gave it to him. Mm -hmm. So go ahead. He said, to one he gave five talents of what? Amen. Now we like to get really cute and say talents is your gifts from the Holy Ghost. And that could be true. But the scripture says it's talents of money. Mm -hmm. Now you know I don't preach money, but that means this man gave them money and told them to take care of everything. Maybe that's why God giving you money. For you to take care of his work. Yes. Come on, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Maybe he's not giving you money for you to go get what you want that you don't need. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's giving you money to take care of his will. Yes. Yes. Maybe he wants you to go on a journey with camels and with all his wealth to go bring a promise back. Thank you, Jesus. Did you think of that? Yes, Lord. Maybe he wants you to bring a promise back, a soul <coughs> to his kingdom. Hallelujah. Maybe he's giving you things so that you can have a, a church and people to serve God, fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Maybe he didn't give you that for just you. Mm -hmm. Maybe he gave you talent for another reason. To another two talent and to another one talent, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. Now, each one of these people have a measure of talent. Like you get a measure of faith. Each one of them has something mm -hmm. that they can get that the master left them with to take care of his problem. It's not theirs. See, all that stuff Eli Eliezer had was not his. It was Abraham's, his master's. Everything I got, it belongs to my master. That's who gave it to me. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not mine to do what I want to do with it. I'm on a journey. Yes. To bring a promise back. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And what he gave me is for me to go out and serve the living God. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, so he says, then he each, he gave them each uh, what they had according to their ability. So he don't expect you to have what somebody else has. He gave you yours. Say, I got mine. I got mine. What you doing with yours? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's what I want to ask you today. What are you doing with yours? You don't have to have the same thing that somebody else next to you have, but what you're doing with what you do have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then he went on his journey. The man who had received the five talents went at once and put his money to work and gained five more. So also the one with two talents gained two more. But the man who had received the one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground, didn't go on no journey, and hid his master's money. That's just like Eliezer said, you know what? I'm going to take this camel and all this wealth this man gave me and I'm going on to Damascus. I'm not going to do what he told me to do with it. Wow. I'm going to just go on and do what I want to do. I'm going to bury it somewhere. I'm going to just leave it for my children. I'm going to leave it for the next generation. Mm. Yeah. Yep. But when I would have done that. <laughs> Instead, what these people did but the man who had received the one talent went off, dug a hole. That's what he did. Mm -hmm. But in verse 19, 
After a long time, say a long time. A long time. The master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received the five talents brought the other five. Master, he said, brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five talents. If I read it wrong, tell me how. See, I have gained five more. Praise God. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two talents also came. Master, he said, so it don't matter how much you got, does it? You entrusted me with two talents. See, I gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. See, it doesn't matter how much money. It's the fact that they did more with it. Right. Then the man who had received the one talent came. Master, he said, I knew that you were a hard man. Harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not gathered. See, what do you see? That's a, that's a deceitful servant. Mm -hmm. That ain't nothing about his master. That's right. how you see the master. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh -huh. Come on, Jesus. Because the master got plenty. You trying to say he got it illegal. He used other people. He did all kinds of ways to get it. That ain't none of your business. Mm -hmm. uh, that's right. Yep. Come on, so Jesus. So you know this servant ain't right. That's yep. Right. Come on, he Jesus. He worry about what his master got and how yeah. he got it. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Hallelujah. That ain't your business. Say it ain't my business. Ain't my business. Come on, Jesus. So, right. so I was afraid. And I went out, that's what that kind of stuff, and you don't mind your own business, you get in fear. Yeah. Yep. So I was afraid and went out and hid your talent in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. Now, you know we don't want that. Mm -hmm. His master replied, you wicked, lazy, trifling, low-down servant. <laughs> so you knew that I harvest where I have not sown, gather where I have not scattered seed. That's the question. Well, then, you should have put my money on deposit in the bank. So that when I return, I would have received it back with interest. Take the talent from him and give it to the one who has ten. Yep. <laughs> you wonder why some people got more that don't need more? Mm -hmm. It's because you didn't do with what you had, so God gave you somebody else. Come on, come on. Somebody who's going to serve in his kingdom. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Y'all better wake up. For everyone who has will be given more, and he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have even what he has will be taken from him. And throw that worthless servant, say worthless, worthless, outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You thought you'd just go to hell because you didn't believe in Jesus. Well, what about if you're not serving the living God? You're worthless to God. That's right. Everybody got a measure that God gave them. Don't say I don't have enough. Yes, yes. Say what I do have. Yes, Lord. I'm going to use it for the kingdom. Thank yes. you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What little bit I do have, yes. I'm going to use it for the kingdom. Yes. Mm -hmm. Today, Lord, I, I, I don't measure myself by other people. I measure myself by my relationship with you. Because it's all along been about my relationship with you. I do all that I do because I love you That's and right. I want to serve. That's right. Yes. It's nothing to do with nothing else. That's Long right. journey. You've heard that many times in this mm -hmm. church. Yes. And when I get to my master, I want him to say, all I need from him, I don't need no money. That's right. I don't need nothing. I just want him to say, well done. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Praise God. That is enough for me. Yes. If I can get in my master's face, yes. and he can say, you know, you took what I gave you, yes, but you right. live for me. Come on. That's right. You didn't live for yourself. That's right. You sacrificed your needs to take care of your children, mm -hmm. to take care of your household, to take care of what I gave you, yeah. to take care of your church, yeah. to take care of all that I have given you. Yeah. You did what I asked you to do. Yeah. So the promise yeah. is yours. Yeah. Because you knew how to serve me. Hallelujah. 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 You took all that I had with you on your journey. Everything that I gave you on your journey. And you looked for nothing for yourself. You was looking to serve your master. Hallelujah. So that when you get to him, you say, well, done, done, good, and faithful. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Come and be in happiness with me. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm telling you right now, you better look and see what word do I have. What is that measure I do have? Am I serving God with it? Am I like Eliezer? Do I obey him? Am I praying and asking him what to do, how to do it, how to fulfill his will? Or do I just pray for more stuff? Or do I pray and say, God, I want to do your will. I want to I I do something for my master. That's what this man prayed. Oh, I just want you to show me the wife of my master's son. That's all I pray for, is to do his will. Hallelujah. Some of y'all pray for everything you can get. Maybe y'all pray to do his will. Yes. Maybe why he's not giving it to you is because you're asking a myth. You're not asking him with the love of God yes. to serve him. Yes. I want it because I need it to serve you more. Yes, Lord. That's all. Yes. If you feel a little conviction, it's all right. You can make this correction right now. Yes, so that when you get up there, he won't say, you know what? All that I gave you, you served yourself. You're buried, and you did you weren't useful for my kingdom. That's a shameful thing to hear, isn't it? All that work you did, get up to heaven, and it wasn't worth nothing. All that money you made. Get up to heaven and ain't worth nothing. All them houses you bought, all them cars you bought, all these years of clothes you bought, all the jewelry you bought, you left it behind and you get to heaven and you have nothing to show for it. That's right. Come on, Jesus. I'm going to be a servant. That's right. Because a servant gets the promise. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm on a journey. I got to get something for my master with my life. Hallelujah. My life got to be worth something. I'm on a journey, yeah. hallelujah, uh, to get something done for my master. Yes. Hallelujah. hallelujah. And it's well with my soul. Yes. Hallelujah. Because I know what he's going to say when I get there. Mm -hmm. Well done. Come say well done. Well done. You know how those old preachers say, well done. I can't do it that way. <laughs> I was raised Catholic. I only went to funerals and heard, well done. Say, well done. Well done. Thy good, good. and faith. Sure. Now you can go ahead and say, uh huh. Uh huh. I don't care if you say that as long as you got the message. I don't care if you say, uh huh. All you want, just get the message. Say, well done. Well done. That's all I want from God. Yeah. I'm on a journey, and for everything I have belongs to Him. I want to be useful to my master. Yes. So when I get there, I get the promise. Yes. I'm bringing home the goods, yes. which is the promise. Yes. Almighty Father, as we pray, by your hands, Lord Jesus. Oh, oh Lord, you got servants in here. There's no greater servant than your son. I saw in your word, Lord, that we're supposed to be kings and priests. But I noticed something in your word. I first got to be a servant before I can be a king. I first got to serve before I can be a seed for others. Everybody that you call, you made them a servant first. And then you rewarded them with what they need to finish the journey. Oh God, today you have servants in the house of this church. Yes. You don't call nobody the servants here. Yes. People who love you and want to serve. Yes. Today, Lord, I want you to ask God, give me a heart to serve, Lord. Not myself, but you. Yes. So I can use what you did give me instead of griping and worrying about what I need. Mm -hmm. I want to pray, not my will, but thy will be done. I want to pray that I, I fulfill the mission that you gave me. Yes. I want to pray that with the breath left in me, I'm going to finish my journey yes. knowing that I did my master's will. Yes. Today, Lord, that's all I want is to hear you say, well done, yes. thy good yes. and faithful.
faithful servants. How many of you here would, would raise your hand and say, I think I got that message, Pastor. Yes, thank you, Jesus. I'm not going to bear my, bear my talents, my gifts. I'm not going to bear my goods. I'm on my way to my promise. My master chose me to serve him. And that's all my life is worth. Serving my master. Yes. Day and night. Yes. I just want to serve. Yes, Lord. When I leave today, Lord, make me have a servant's heart. So I surrender all. One thing a servant doesn't do. He doesn't serve man. He serves God. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 I show you that in the scriptures. He serves God. Yes. So when you leave today, be blessed. And be on your journey. Almighty Father, has anybody in here who don't know the word that I preach, tell them to come on up here. If they don't know the God that we serve, tell them to come on up here, Lord, by your spirit. If you're in here and you say, I, I don't know the God that you're talking about, I want you to get up out your seat and say, I want to know him better. I want to commit my life to Christ so that I might be a true servant. There's no greater servant than he was. Almighty Father, today I bless your people as they leave. I cover and seal this message on their hearts. Not for them to live in conviction, but to live in love and service to you. Oh God, we pray. Thank you. 